organisations given UK government grants will be banned from using the money to try to persuade ministers to change the law or increase spending. The government said the new clause in grant agreements will mean funds go to good causes, not political campaigns. The Cabinet Office said the farce of government lobbying government had to stop, but a Tory MP said the move could have serious consequences. Voluntary groups said the rules could threaten their freedom to speak out. Critics also said the restrictions, which come into effect in May and will only apply to grants from central UK government departments, could be hard to enforce. Surely, charities, are morally bound to tell the government they could improve their work to help, say, children in poverty? Lord Harry's, former Bishop of Oxford. According to a House of Commons briefing, the estimated total income of the UK voluntary sector, not including charities, in 2012-13 was pound 40 bn, of which pound 13 bn came from government grants. The Cabinet Office said UK government departments gave the voluntary sector just under pound 10 bn in grants last year. Under the new conditions, organisations will not be able to use grants for activity intended to influence, or attempt to influence, parliament, government or political parties. Charities will still be able to use privately raised funds to campaign as they like. Uncomfortable for a government. Cabinet Office Minister Matthew Hancock said, the public sector never lobbies for lower taxes and less state spending, and it's a zero-sum game if Peter is robbed to pay Paul. However, Conservative MP Sarah Wollaston, who chairs the Commons Health Select Committee, attacked the plans. Dr Wollaston posted on Twitter, Ending charities' ability to lobby ministers would have serious consequences for number public health balance already distorted in favour of industry. Meanwhile, a senior charity source told the BBC it was an attack on freedom of speech. Charities are not only about Tiny Tim on his crutch, but espousing the cause of the disadvantaged, the source said. That will sometimes be uncomfortable for any government. BBC political reporter Alan Sodi said exactly how such a rule would be enforced, and how charities would prove which pots of money funding for lobbying came from, was still unanswered. There was also some concern in Whitehall that some charities seemed to have been set up primarily to lobby, or that they were straying from their brief on the issues they lobbied on, he said. The move follows work by the right-of-center think tank the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, into so-called sock puppets where taxpayers' money is given to pressure groups which then campaign for policy changes or extra money. Bureaucratic Nonsense Chris Snowden, the organization's head of lifestyle economics, said, at every level, local, national and European, people have been subsidizing political campaigns that they may not know about and might disagree with. Campaigning is an important part of a thriving democracy but charities and pressure groups should not be doing it with taxpayers' money. Former Bishop of Oxford Lord Harrys, who chairs a commission which has looked into charity lobbying, the Commission on Civil Society and Democratic Engagement, said the polarization between charities' direct work and policies they wanted to change was very, very unhelpful. Charities on the front line could often best identify where government policy was failing, and surely they are morally bound to tell the government they could improve their work to help, say, children in poverty. He said. Trying to separate where lobbying money came from would be a bureaucratic nonsense, he added. Sir Stuart Etherington, chief executive of the National Council for Voluntary Organizations, an umbrella body for the voluntary sector in England, added his concern warning that the draconian new rules could force charities to take a vow of silence. The new rules attached to grant income would appear to prevent charities from suggesting improvements or efficiencies to civil servants or ministers, or even from raising concerns with MPs, for example about the treatment of vulnerable people. The system has been trialed in grants provided by the Department for Communities and Local Government. Ministers insisted it had not curtailed the ability of charities such as shelter from lobbying on housing legislation.